In this lesson, we're going to start taking a look at how we can take a UV snapshot so we can put it over into Photoshop to create our textures, giving us a base reference point in order to know exactly where on the texture our UV is located. So let's go ahead and get started. Well, we're going to need to create a rope texture for our little twines going down this handle. So we need to know where is this UV going to be laid out on our texture. So in order to do that, we're going to come over to our UV map editor. Go ahead and select one of these twines and you can notice that we put these over off to the side. Well we're not going to want to do that. We're going to want to put these over into this quadrant right here. Now it's important to note that anytime you want to create a texture in an external application that's going to be specific to a UV location. So it's going to be specific to where this UV is for this object. It needs to be in this upper right hand square especially for games. So because of the way we're going to be setting this up we're going to need to move all these into this quadrant. So let's go ahead and do that. What we want to do is go ahead and select all of them. So we're going to need to get all of these twines. Let's open up our outliner real fast. And I can see I got the handle ropes right here. We have them all inside the same little folder. So I'm just going to go ahead and select all of them, go back to the, and again, all I did was I just clicked the top one, held down shift, and clicked the one at the bottom, and that select them all. Alternatively, you could just select the group, and that will also select all the objects within the group. And with all them selected, I'm going to come down here to our UV editor, and I'm going to right click, I'm going to select shell, and then I'm going to mark key select. I'm not just going to click on it, because that'll just select the one on top. I'm going to mark key select so I get all of them, and press W on the keyboard. Now I'm just going to go ahead and move this over into our UV map upper right hand quadrant and we're going to kind of scale this a bit because you can see it's going out of the top up here and I want it to be inside this square so I just hold down press R scale press W and I'll just go ahead and drop this down just a little bit so that'll get me in here now let me hit control Z twice just to make sure I am scaling this uniformly yeah right there that's pretty good and then I'll press W and I'll just drag this down a little bit and try to center it inside of this UV location here. We only really need one of these, so I'm just going to select one of these rings. Any one of them is fine. I'll just go to object mode, select one of them, and now I, I know all of them are located in this center area, so I'm going to select one of them. I'm going to come up here to polygons, and I'm going to select UV snapshot. Now with UV snapshot open, we're going to go ahead and set it up real fast. So I'm just going to come over here and choose where do I want this to be. So I'll pick a file name. So I'm going to browse and I'm going to go to the images folder will be fine for this. And we can give this a name. We're going to call this our UV underscore snap and I'll name it rope. So I know exactly which UV snapshot this is. And then I'll go ahead and click save. Now before I actually save it. We haven't saved it yet. We just gave it a name. We're going to set up the size. Now, important thing to note when creating a texture is that whatever your outcome, expected outcome is going to be, let's say my expected outcome is going to be like 2048 by 2048. So it's like an HD texture. Well, I'm going to want to develop it in double that. So if I'm looking to make 2048 by 2048, then I want my texture my initial texture to be 4096 by 4096. Now, why is this? Well, when you use by cubic reduction, which is resizing an image, in a, in a, it's a manner of resizing an image from a larger size to smaller size. Like if I have an HD image and I shrink it down half, it's going to blend better and look nicer than it did when it was in its original size. So that's why whenever you're creating a texture, you want that texture to be developed in double its size because your outcome when you shrink it down is going to look better than it did when it was in its original size, if that makes any sense. It'll make sense as you get more experience. So again, if you're creating a 1024 by 1024 texture, you're going to want to texture, develop the texture in 2048 by 2048. And then when you're done creating the texture, shrink it down to 1024 by 1024. So create your texture in twice the resolution as what your intended outcome is going to be, and you will get a better overall result. So I'm going to set this to 4096 by 4096. Keep aspect ratio checked. Color value, you want to set this to black because we're going to be using a ping to export. So set your color value to black and have anti-alias lines checked. That'll give us more crisp lines. 
and we definitely want the image format to be ping. Now, why PNG? Doesn't that have interlaced alpha? Yes, it does. You're probably asking if you know anything about PNGs. Well, part of the reason is PNGs, if you export a UV snapshot with a PNG, it's going to export it with transparency. And that'll save us a lot of work in our image editing program. I'm going to be using Photoshop. If you were to say export as a JPEG, it's going to give it a white background, which we don't want a white background. We want a clear background so we can overlay it and find our location of our texture and then kind of texture behind it on a background. So we want it to be transparent. So in order to get a transparent background, we want to set it to PNG. Now what is color value doing? We have this set to black, but we're going to have a transparent background because we're setting it to ping. Well, color value, these white lines for our UV map, that's setting the color of those lines. And we want those to be black so they're easier to see within Photoshop. So that's the entire purpose of setting the color value to black. We can have the UV range, you definitely want that 0 to 1. And if you look here, what does that mean? That means that in our UV map, we have a 0 grid mark to 1. And 0 grid mark to 1. Now if I were to set this to take a UV snapshot of 0 to 1 and 0 to negative 1, it would capture this quadrant. That's exactly what that's doing. So you can see if you drop it down, you can enter a specific range that would give you a different area of this UV that it's going to take a snapshot of, which we don't want to do that. We just want normal 0 to 1. That's what's normal. This is normally where textures are located, so that's what we want. And then we're going to go ahead and click OK. It's going to think for a minute and then export our UV snapshot. Now while we're at it and we're exporting UV snapshots, let's go ahead and get a UV snapshot of our overall sword. We know that we've moved around some UV shells here and we're going to be projecting this entire handle, the handle portion up here just below the blade. And this entire area here is going to need to be projected onto our original sword because we moved UV shells and we have some additional added high poly details. So we're going to need to project this. But this area right here, the hilt, we've made no changes to this. And we've also made no changes to the blade. So we want to texture these within Photoshop because we're not going to be using projection details for this portion of this sword. So if I select the sword itself, I could see that this area right here, I have not moved it. So it can stay the same in the texture. It's not going to need projected. And the hilt, I haven't made any changes to on its UV location. I haven't right clicked, selected shell and made any movements to it. I've left it in its same spot that it's been the entire time along with the balls on the handle. None of these are going to need to be projected onto our game model because we can just create a texture for these portions of this sword and combine them with the projected details of the hilt. And all this will make a lot more sense when we get into it. And this way I don't have to go through that extra process. I could texture these into Photoshop. So let's go ahead and just take a UV snapshot of this portion of the sword. So let's go to object mode, just select the sword, and we're going to just take a UV snapshot of the whole thing. So I'm going to go up to polygons. I'm going to create a UV snapshot. Now again, I'm going to need to give it a name. So I'll click to browse. And we here we can see we have our UV snapshot of our rope. So let's just select that and then we'll rename the end of it. Instead of rope, we're going to call this sword. So this is the entire sword. And then we'll come over here and we'll click save. And we want our texture to be 4096 by 4096. I'm going to be reducing that to 2048 by 2048, which is half the resolution that I'm creating the texture in. I want it to be black and I want it to be a PNG so everything's transparent except for my UV shell lines. Once I have all that set up, I'll go ahead and click OK. And it's going to think for a minute and then it's going to export my UV snapshot. Now that I have the UV shells, I'm done for a little bit within Maya, but I did make some changes to this ropes UV location. I want to make sure I save that or else everything we do in Photoshop is going to be a waste of time. So let's go ahead and come up here, click file, and we're going to save our project, which you should be saving your scene multiple times as you progress. And once it's saved, you can go ahead and minimize Maya and we're going to get Photoshop opened up. So I'll go ahead and open up Photoshop and we got to browse to the folder that we saved these UV snapshots to. So I'll go ahead and double click the Maya tutorial sword folder. This is our project folder and we saved it inside of images, if you'll recall. And we have our two PNGs right here. So let's go ahead and drag our UV snapshot rope into Photoshop. And you can see it, it's there, it's really hard to see. And we'll go ahead and do the same thing with the UV snap sword. And I'm just going to drag and drop that 
right up here and it's there it's just really hard to see so we're going to make some adjustments to make this a little easier to see so in the next video we're going to start taking a look at how we can use our uv snapshots within photoshop to develop our textures for our sword if you have any questions or comments please post below the video on brainpoof.com and click subscribe to follow us on youtube